Hey, it's Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and this week's Chalk Talk is a 12 lead with some interesting rhythm problems. Whenever you're looking at a 12 lead, I always say take a look at the rhythm strip first. You want to get a sense of what the rhythm is doing, and as we glance across this rhythm strip, it almost looks regular, but it's not. The R to R intervals are shorter and then longer and then shorter and then longer. And so it's regularly irregular. I like to refer to this as a bigeminal rhythm because every other QRS complex is earlier. And some people will also refer to this as group beating because in essence, what you have are groups of two. Normally group beating is pretty obvious. You got these long pauses in between the groups of two, but here the pauses are very subtle. There are a number of different things that will cause group beating, in particular here groups of two. So what you have to think about is atrial bigeminy, where every other P wave is premature. Sometimes the pauses are due to blocked PACs, and then finally, of course, group beating classically can be due to some kind of AV block. So let's figure out which it is. And to do that, you have to look for P waves and see how the P waves are related to the QRS complexes. So here in this first QRS complex, you have a very nice P wave that seems to precede the QRS. But then when you look in front of the next QRS complex, you don't see a P wave, but it should be pretty obvious to you that there is a P wave. It just occurs way back here. Now it's conceivable that this is a premature atrial contraction. Look how long that PR interval is. It's about 400 milliseconds. Let's just pause and think about this for a moment. Keep in mind that the AV node, those cells depolarize because of slow calcium currents. And when you look at the action potential, it has a gradual upstroke as opposed to sodium dependent fibers like myocardial cells and his Purkinje cells that have rapid sodium flowing in and they get a very sharp phase zero. In AV nodal cells, just like sinus nodal cells, the phase zero is very gradual because the calcium is moving in slowly. Because of that, the cells behave differently. They exhibit something called decremental conduction, which means that the more premature the beat or the faster the rhythm, the worse the AV node conducts. So that's why premature beats will sometimes take longer to get down the AV node. You get delay in the signal, which is what causes the PR interval to lengthen in response to a premature atrial contraction. And we'll also see this if you have like a rapid atrial rhythm, like atrial tachycardia. It's conceivable that this is a PAC that conducts with a long first degree because of AV node decremental conduction. Now, where's the next P wave? Well, it looks like it could be here. And then you have the next P wave here that seems to conduct with a very long PR interval. And that pattern seems to repeat over and over again. So you have a P wave, and then this P conducts with a very long first degree. And so it may be that we're dealing with atrial bigeminy, where the PACs are simply conducting with a long first degree AV block because of decremental conduction. However, that's not the answer here. You have to be able to analyze the signals a little bit more carefully. You have to look for more subtle findings. And the subtle finding is this. If you look at the ST segment of this first beat and compare it with the ST segment of the second beat, they're different, aren't they? And that's a pretty consistent finding here in this first beat, the ST segment is flat. And in this second beat, the ST segment has a bump on it. Now's the time to pull out a pair of calipers because the calipers will allow you to see if that bump is a third P wave. So let's set our calipers to the P to P interval so we look for the beginning of the P wave. And then if we move the calipers over to see if that P wave occurs on time, we say, hmm, wait a minute. The P wave should have occurred here where the caliper point lands. And so what's this bump here? Well, all right, let's just keep measuring and see how things map out. If we bring our calipers over here again, which is where we expected the P wave to be, we see that this one does occur on time. And if we move it over to the next one, we see that the second P wave is similarly spaced. And then we move it over again and we see that's really odd because 
We're looking for three to two winky back. That would be a very common cause of group beating with basically have a short PR and then a longer PR and then the third P wave occurs on time but blocks and then the PR gets shorter again. That's your typical three to two winky back. But the P to P interval here is not regular. That's so weird, isn't it? So this is not just a normal sinus rhythm marching through with three to two winky back because if we move again, it's the same thing. This P wave is timed when we would expect it. The next P wave is regular, and but the third P wave seems to come early. I mean, this bump here at the end of the QRS complex has to be a P wave because it's absent in these. It's not part of the QRS, but the P to P interval is not regular. So this is actually a very unusual and complex tracing. What you have here is every third P wave is premature and blocks. So you have atrial trigemini because every third P wave is premature and it's blocked. So it's non-conducted atrial trigemini, but the second normal sinus P wave conducts with a very long first degree. So obviously this AV node has a little bit of a problem because what's the sinus rate here? It's about 80 beats a minute, but with 80 beats per minute, the second P wave is taking a long time to conduct. This AV node is pretty beat up. And I believe that if this third P wave was on time, it would have blocked anyway. I think what you're dealing with is AV node dysfunction, but on top of that, there's a atrial trigemini with every third P wave being a little bit premature. Most cardiologists, I think, would just label this as three to two winky back because most of them won't pull out calipers to measure the P to P interval. Otherwise, the ECG is fairly normal. Okay, so I think the lesson here is don't accept the most obvious diagnosis. Sometimes there are subtle findings that will have you change your mind. You have to look for subtle findings to get the whole diagnosis. So anyway, until next time, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching.